What is going on with y'all, man? It is Black Balloon. Now I'm coming back with another video. So y'all already know what's going on. All right, y'all. Now look, today we got a pretty interesting video, right? Every time I do one of these UFO videos, I get a lot of good feedback. And it's been quite a while since I've done a video about UFOs, right? This comes in light of recent congressional hearings about UFOs. And y'all will be surprised that they have actually changed the name. They're not calling them UFOs anymore. I'll let y'all hear a little bit more about that here in a second. But the recent congressional hearings is what sparked me to do this video, right? Because I feel I know the truth about UFOs, no matter, you know, who testifies, you know, from the Senate or these supposed whistleblowers who they are trying to protect or give them more of a platform because really they aren't saying anything because when they get asked tough questions, they say that they're not, you know, willing to say it public at a hearing that they have to say it behind closed doors. Also, you got Trump, you know, vowing to basically release a lot more information about UFOs when he becomes president. You know, it was a couple of other things that he vowed to like release a bunch of info on, right? You know, full disclosure, as they say. I want to play y'all just, you know, maybe like a three to four minute clip from one of the congressional hearings, right? It's just so you can get a load of the malarkey that they're talking about, basically some BS. But what I have to say, there can be no proper UFO video without talking about the Nazis and the Tula Society or the Vril Society. Now, if y'all know my channel, y'all been around for a long time. Coming up on two years where I did a video about UFOs, um, Antarctica. It's, it's, it's close to like two years ago, the last time I talked about the topic, right? I'm going to pull like a very important clip and a piece of this article that is like very important to understanding what UFOs are. I know a lot of y'all know that they are demonic in a sense. They are fallen angels. Um, but there, there's a lot more to it to understand what we are actually looking at and how much our own government has to do with some of the technology that we see that are now called UFOs. So, we got to revisit a little bit of that just to have a full understanding, because I know a lot of y'all probably didn't see those videos I dropped. I'll be sure to also put them in the description. I'll link them in the description for anybody who want to go back and watch because it's full of good information about these UFOs. So, y'all, without me talking too much, I'm right here. to Look, we'll go ahead and jump into this first clip of a recent congressional hearing about UFOs. And we're going to come back and talk about this a little bit more. Check this out. Thank you for this opportunity to testify today regarding Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena, or UAP. Confirmation that UAPs are real came to me in January of 2015 when I was serving as the commander of the Navy Meteorology and Oceanography Command. Uh, at the time, my personnel were participating in a pre-deployment naval exercise off the U.S. East Coast. It included the USS Theodore Roosevelt Carrier Strike Group. And this exercise was overseen by the United States Fleet Forces Command, led by a four-star admiral who at the time was also my superior officer. During this exercise, I received an email on Navy's secure network from the operations officer of U.S. Fleet Forces Command. The email was addressed to all the subordinate commanders, and the subject line read in all capital letters, Urgent Safety of Flight Issue. The text of the email was brief but alarming, with words to the effect, If any of you know what these are, tell me ASAP. We are having multiple near mid-air collisions, and if we do not resolve this soon, we are going to have to shut down the exercise. Attached to the email is what is now known as the Go Fast video, captured on the forward-looking infrared sensor of one of the Navy F-18 aircraft participating in the exercise. The now declassified video showed an unidentified object exhibiting flight and structural characteristics unlike anything in our arsenal. The implication of the email was clear, 
The author was asking whether any of the recipients were aware of classified technology demonstrations that could explain these objects. Because the DoD policy is to rigorously deconflict such demonstrations with live exercises, I was confident this was not the case. The very next day, that email disappeared from my account and those of the other recipients without explanation. Moreover, the commander of Fleet Forces Command and the operations officer never discussed the subject. Even during weekly meetings specifically designed to address issues affecting exercises like the one in which the Theodore Roosevelt strike group was participating. This lack of follow-up was very concerning to me. As the Navy's chief meteorologist at the time, I was responsible for re reducing safety of flight risks. Yet it appeared to me that no one at the flag officer level was addressing the safety risk posed by UAPs. Instead, pilots were left to mitigate these threats on their own without guidance or support. I concluded that the UAP information must have been classified within a special access program managed by an intelligence agency. That is a compartmented program that even senior officials, including myself, were not read into. Last year's UAP hearing before this oversight committee confirmed that UAP-related information is being withheld from senior officials and members of Congress. And just this week, I learned from former DOD official Chris Mellon that satellite imagery of UAP from a few years ago still has not been shared with Congress. Equally concerning, last year's UAP hearing also revealed that elements of the government are engaged in a disinformation campaign to include personal attacks designed to discredit UAP whistleblowers. All right, y'all. Now, this is one of my favorite articles that have to do with the Vril Society, UFOs, the Nazi Party, and so on, right? Really gives you a deep dive into the secret society and, you know, the supposed super technology that they were capable of back in the 40s. I want to read y'all this article real quick. The Vril Society is an alleged secret society many believe gave birth to the Nazi party. The World War II era was a time when many mysteries were created, when no one was really sure whether or not the rumors they heard were true. This was especially true about Nazi Germany. For many historians, the Vril Society remains a prime example of how truly bizarre some of the rumors about the Nazi regime were. For occult researchers, the Vril Society quickly became an example of how technology and magic can be used for evil. Named after a popular 19th century novel by the name of Vril, The Power of the Coming Race, the book was widely appreciated throughout the English-speaking world and talked about an antediluvian race that had access to highly advanced energy source called Vril. The Vrilia, the race who lived underground, supposedly had telepathic powers, highly advanced technology, and were able to do incredible amounts of damage simply by using a Vril wand. The superior ancient race that had control of Vril would run out of habitable spaces underground and that they would move up to the surface world. Since many at the time believed in the possibility of an antediluvian race, there were people who accepted the coming race as fact instead of fiction. It was the hyper popularity of this 1870s book that propelled the idea of the Vril Society into the realm of potential reality. Much of the Vril Society's work was supposed to have happened before World War II, with the society's activity tapering off once Hitler had lost the war. Originally connected to secret societies such as the Tula Society and other similar societies tied to Nazi occultism, the Vril Society quickly became the stuff of legend among those who heard the rumors of the super technology associated with this mysterious sect. One of the most bizarre issues about the Vril Society was how little was written about it during what would have been their most active years. Much of the written accounts of the rumors of the Vril Society were first found in a book by Louis Pauls and Jacques Bergier in 1967. A large portion of the book spoke about the Vril Society's doings, including their involvement in legendary Nazi inventions, their communications with aliens, occult dealings, and aiding Hitler and his highest ranking soldiers escape to the South Pole and Antarctica. But we know a lot of it was fact because when the US got word that all of these scientists and stuff, they disappeared, but they weren't showing up as dead. They, there was no documentation. The US went searching. And for a lot of people that don't know, Admiral Byrd, he was sent to destroy the Nazi base that was at Antarctica. 
that was the mission. The mission was to destroy the base that was already built by the Nazis who were already there. It wasn't to go exploring and finding new stuff. It was to go and destroy. Supposedly, they were met with a force that they have never seen. They were met with flying saucers, UFOs that were attacking them, like shooting out, you know, actual laser type bullets and stuff. But at that time, the Nazi denied that it was their technology because the UFOs actually rose out of the water. They rose out of the water and they were silent as silent can be. They were saying that when these UFOs were flying past their planes, they were completely silent and they were dipping in and out of water. So that's something to note as we continue to go down the rabbit hole of UFOs in this video, right? We're going to get to more of possibly what that could have been, but it's something to note about the Vril Society aiding Hitler and his highest ranking soldiers to escape to the South Pole. So prior to the 1967 book, the only mention of anything close to the Vril Society was in a 1947 article by a German defector who spoke of a society that searched for Vril in Berlin. The 1990s saw yet another wave of real focused books being published by conspiracy theorists. According to those who have researched the real society at length, this secret society was initially established as the all German society for metaphysics headed by a medium by the name of Maria Orsic and another medium who only went by the name of Sigrun. And here they are right here. You notice one to the left is for sure. A witch. These two mediums had gotten into contact with the Aryan aliens and were given the goal of space flight to reach the Aryan home planet of Aldebaran, if I'm saying that right. Many of the original members were also active in the Tula Society, which was known to be an occult movement around the turn of the century. In some circles, the names were used interchangeably. Unlike many secret societies, People who have heard about the actions of the Vril Society were quick to admit that the group's highly focused programs went into effect faster than anyone could have imagined. Officially, the Vril Society was first really founded in 1921. By the end of 1922, the Vril Society had supposedly created their first flying disc. So we're talking about 1922, y'all, also known as the Other World Flight Machine. That was meant to be a test for interplanetary flight. So their first flying disc in 1922 was meant to be a test for interplanetary flight. The pace of technology creation, invention, and communication with high-ranking Nazi personnel was shocking to everyone who had heard of them. Much of the heavy communication with government officials in Germany was facilitated by the fact that the society's members were often high-ranking officials. As many who have heard of the Vril Society may know, Adolf Hitler was one of the supposed members of the sect. It should come as no surprise that two of the other members of Vril received government money for their flying saucer work, and that yet another member designed the Nazi flag was associated with both the Tula and Vril Societies. By the early 1940s, people had begun to suspect Hitler's involvement in a secret society practicing the occult. In order to save face to avoid such allegations, Adolf Hitler had to take steps to dismantle secret societies in Germany. In 1941, Hitler made a strict change of law by banning all secret societies. The member of the Vril Society were quickly joined into the Nazi E-IV unit. During the 1940s, the Vril Society was credited with the construction of multiple flying discs and working in conjunction with the Nazis' occult unit. Other units were developed in order to cover up sightings of the alien replica craft reported by soldiers, civilians, and people who lived in other countries. Check this out. This is very important right here. In the 1940s, they had units who were developed in order to cover up sightings of the alien replica craft reported by soldiers, regular people, civilians, and people who lived in other countries, y'all. So they were flying them everywhere. They already had a team of people who were basically like, if you saw this, no, you didn't see this. We were putting things out. We're covering up what these people are seeing. That's very important. Why? Because the guy 
in the clip that we just watched from the congressional hearing, he just told you this same thing. Of course, they've been doing it since the night, the 40s and 50s, but the U.S. is they're continuing to do that same thing. They have teams of people who are in charge and covering this up until they reach, you know, the ultimate like alien invasion goal, which is what, you know, the end game of all this stuff is when they actually truly fake an alien invasion to bring the entire world together. You know, we'll we'll get to that a little more, too, because I got to pass a Darby clip that supports that. And I really want to play that clip. So what man is doing through Satan or the fallen, giving them the knowledge that they think is technology is they're doing for Satan what he can't do for himself. He cannot come in this world. So those angels that are reserved in chains and are in out of darkness, they want to get out of there where they've been banished and cross back into this, what we call the material world. Are y'all there? So this is what the, this is why Satan has now the bloodline families that are the richest people. And some of these are the Royals and them type people. They can trace their bloodline back to the Nephilim. This is why they interbreed. Because they have the, the same bloodline. Are y'all there? This is, this is going to be a deep teaching. I see where I'm going. Now, can y'all can handle what I'm saying? Now, so Satan's goal is to uh, deceive man by uh, saying, and listen, what have you been conditioned for since the event of television? What have we been conditioned for? Always remember what television is conditioning us for. When television, before television, radio. During radio, there was a CIA psyop called War of the Worlds, where they didn't tell the people that it was a, uh, they was actually had a, doing a, uh, a play on radio. The people panicked and thought it was real. The goal was to see how the people would respond. So if you go fast forward to the 80s, Ronald Reagan said, the only thing that would make man give up his differences and all of his religion is if we get something coming from the sky. Then the world will become, come on, one, which is the new world order that the Bible speaks about, the one world government that the bloodline families are entrusted to bring to pass. Talk back to me. Are y'all there? So what we're being conditioned for, we've been conditioned for, is every movie is conditioning you for the same thing. For the, these beings to appear. That's very important, y'all. Very important. All right, look. 1945 marked the year when the real magic eye was developed. Check this out. Check this out. For the people that don't remember, you never saw this, right? The magic eye was supposedly a highly accurate Nazi reconnaissance and espionage device that had a probe that could appear and disappear at will, as well as arc through dimensions and spy at any location at any time. Think about that. Listen to this, y'all. 1945, they had a real magic eye. It was developed. The magic eye was supposedly a highly accurate Nazi reconnaissance and espionage device that had a probe that could appear and disappear at will. Supposedly arc through dimensions and spy at any location at any time. It's a probe. No one is in there. Think about that. Think about that for a second. No one is controlling it. That probe, as in like no one is inside of it controlling it. A real magic eye. Remember what they were involved in. High occult knowledge. Supposedly the people that those two witches, those two mediums that were in charge of the real society. Remember it said they were in contact with supposed beings. I think it's safe to say that they're demonic beings, fallen angels who they were getting this knowledge from. And it makes sense that the people or the two women that were at the top of the Vril Society, they were mediums, they were witches. So they had expertise in contacting darkness and contacting these dark beings or hell, 
even being able to contact these fallen angels to get them help for making this kind of technology in the 40s. After the war and the defeat of the Nazi regime, the Vril Society supposedly escaped to Antarctica, where they remain to this day. And just, you know, to save face, no one knows for sure whether or not the Vril Society ever really existed. But the fact is that the legends alone have made a huge impact on the way people view 1940s occultism in Germany. So this article, I just I just love this article because I believe everything about it is 100 percent true. And there's even more stuff that supports this. So the clips that I have that I want to play, it goes into a little bit of the spiritual side of what UFOs are. Now, this is why I said no UF, UFO video is correct without talking about the Vril Society and the Nazi party, because that is where it all started. They were the first ones to make a probe that could appear and disappear at will, supposedly travel dimensions at speeds that are unknown, completely silent. They were the first ones to create a disc shaped plane, if you want to call it that. And that was in 1921. By 1945, they had that probe that could appear and disappear at will. So that's just 25 years later, they were already way more advanced than we could imagine. We're going to go ahead and play those clips because those clips really tie everything together. If, you know, for people who really want to know what a UFO possibly can be, there's definitely like two things, two to three things to consider and ask yourself, you know, when it comes to these UFOs. So, um, y'all, with that being said, we'll jump into this next clip. Check this out. You can literally <clears throat> hypnotize a person, tell them that there's a cat in their lap. They will see it. They will hear it, purr. They will pet it and feel it. It's not physically there. You tell the cat to scratch them, you know, and bring them out of it. There are scratch marks on their cheek. A non-physical object under the right conditions can leave physical evidence. Uh, I think it's demonic it's a uh, it's a spiritual power of some kind for which there is no physical explanation it that you can't explain it with the laws of chemistry and physics as we know it. the United States printing office issued a 400 page publication entitled UFOs and related subjects an annotated bibliography the author was the senior bibliographer for the Library of Congress Miss Lynn E. Cato during her research, she read over 1,000 articles, books, and other literature. She summarizes her findings in the preface of the bibliography. A large part of the available UFO literature is closely linked with mysticism and the metaphysical. It deals with subjects like mental telepathy, automatic writing, and invisible entities, as well as phenomena like poltergeist manifestations and possession. Many of the UFO reports now being published in the popular press recount alleged incidents that are strikingly similar to demonic possession and psychic phenomenon that have long been known to theologians and parapsychologists. This document was compiled for the United States Air Force and is now in the Library of Congress. Dr. Jacques Vallée has addressed the United Nations on UFOs and was the model for Lacombe in Steven Spielberg's Close Encounters of the Third Kind. He is the author of eight books on UFOs and has been widely recognized as the premier investigating scientist in the realm of UFO research. All right, y'all, now, the first part of that clip, he said a non-physical object under the right conditions can leave physical evidence. When he was talking about how you can hypnotize a person and turn something that's not there to being physically present and actually leaving marks on your body when he was talking about the cat. You can feel it, you can hear it, you can touch it as if it's there. You can tell the cat to scratch you and it will leave physical presence. Now, that says a lot, even just about hypnotism, hypnotizing the public. 
with UFOs, it really makes a lot of sense with UFOs being the messengers of deception or these fallen angel, you know, entities, you know, or UFOs being more spiritual than physical being demonic. It is a demonic presence. That's why I said last time you have like two to three things to think about here. Just like the dude said, right? He said the UFOs are real, but they're not physical. So there's a bunch of deception that's going on here with UFOs, right? You're either getting probes, you know, like those ones that were created by the Vril Society, Nazi Party back in the 40s, where nothing is being, you know, controlled by someone that is there, or you're getting really advanced technology that is digital, you know, which a lot of those lights that people think are UFOs and they're flying all over the place, those are like, they're, they're digital. They're not physical. You couldn't touch it. It's like, it's a digital field that looks like a flying saucer and it's being controlled from somewhere. You know, you, you, now we have very highly advanced technology where, you know, we could project something like that and it looks like a UFO and it's defying gravity because it's not actually physical. It's not actually being flown by anyone or any entity. So you have to look at what our technology now can create. Remember, there are over 200 years plus of what we know to be current technology. They're so far ahead, we wouldn't even be able to imagine it. But I think we get a glimpse of it with some of this UFO stuff. But... That is not me saying that all objects that we see in the sky are our technology. Because you have to remember the story about Admiral Byrd and the UFOs coming out of the water. The Germans denied that being their technology. So, you know, you have to also think about the fact that there may actually be real UFOs, you know, real spiritual UFOs that are fallen angels. You know, they're not they're not aliens riding in and out of our dimension. You know, they could actually be spiritual UFOs. You know, they're not physical. It it just it makes you think about a lot of things. The fake alien invasion that is highly rumored to happen by our governments that maybe they are psychologically hypnotizing the public or preparing us for this fake alien invasion through movies, sci-fi movies, a bunch of alien movies, this and that, when really it's going to be a bunch of digital UFOs or, you know, a bunch of UFOs that are not actually physical, but it's being controlled by some kind of highly advanced technology. Like when it comes to this topic, it's very deep. It's very deep to discuss. It makes you think about a lot of things that, you know, could possibly be. It makes you think like, oh, what if they are really like fallen angels? You know, what if what if it is? some kind of mass deception, you know, that's just basically playing tricks on our mind. You know, what if that's all it is? What if it's just our government toying with us, preparing us for an alien invasion? You know, it makes you think about a bunch of stuff. Even just randomly makes me think about that movie, um, They Live, directed, well, not a movie, the documentary, They Live, by um, John Carpenter back in the 80s. How, you know, like all the powerful people, and they put the glasses on, they were, you know, alien skull faces or, you know, whatever you want to call them, all the rich people of the world, you know, basically put those glasses on and you see everything for what it is. It makes you think about a bunch of stuff when we're talking about UFOs. You know, you could really get lost in this subject and go a bunch of different ways. But when I first heard those clips a while back, like I said, we, we did two videos on this almost two years ago. It really made the most sense to me. 
that a lot of the stuff we are seeing is a demonic presence. They're not real UFOs. They're not anything we can touch. It's not like the saucers that, you know, the Nazi parties and the real society created. Like, they actually made flying saucers. Like, I'm pretty sure the U.S., they have saucers, you know, that look like UFOs. You know, the ones that they made themselves. But I also believe that it is very spiritual. And when we are talking about it possibly being, you know, different entities or these demonic, you know, entities or these fallen angels that get a glimpse of what we have here and pierce through, you know, our dimension, that it is spiritual, you know, they're real. They're just not physical. And I love the way that they worded it. You know, they're messengers of deception. Maybe they are helping this fake alien invasion. Because guess what? It's all about Satan. It's all about the devil at the end of the day. Using humans to do his will. Because remember, that's all he can do. All he can do is possess. He has to have permission. Those, those demonic spirits, those demons that all work for him they have to have permission to enter into this world they're not just walking around in their spirit form they're inhumans they have to possess in order to do the will for the devil and that's what this all comes down to and you know it's a very deep topic y'all very deep topic so you know maybe Maybe we could kind of keep going and we could do a, a part two, like an updated, you know, video about UFOs, because there's a lot of stuff that's going on right now, especially with that congressional hearing. Um, a lot of people are talking about UFOs. It's, it's, it's out there again, especially with Trump, you know, going into office and, you know, whatever that means with <laughs> the truth about UFOs. All right, y'all. So, um. You know, I guess we'll go ahead and wrap this one up right here for the people that, um, you know, haven't seen me do a video about UFOs or talk about it much. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this one. You know, maybe if y'all want to do a part two um, and we go in a little bit more about the topic. Y'all already know I can um, we can dig up some more stuff and uh, keep talking about it. So, yeah, man, with that being said, I hope y'all enjoyed that video. It's Black Balloon and I'm gonna see y'all soon. I'm out.